This is a little male barred owl, adult, don't know how old, that was just uh, relieved from uh, some fishing line. He was uh, caught up in a, in a lake. And I've never seen, I've had fishing line cases before, but I've never seen so much blood. It's, I just don't know what to make of it. There's uh, exposed tendon, and um, um, I can only see one, um, one actual laceration, and we might be able to stitch that. And I don't think the bones are broken, but you can still have um, all sorts of soft tissue trauma. Uh, you have circulation issues, the potential for that, because no, you don't know how long he's been hanging there. Um, but anyway, he's a little sweet little boy. Ain't you alright, buddy? I know. I know. We'll get you fixed up. Yeah. I'm thawing him out some food right now. Gave him a little drip of ivermectin on his neck to kill any fly larvae that may be uh, growing. I also got him started on some injectable, uh, those killer antibiotics. At 165 bucks a bottle. But it'll last you a good long time, and you only have to give that every four days. So um, anyway, we'll, um, I have an, a 3.30 appointment with him uh, tomorrow afternoon, so we'll uh, let Dr. Martinez take a peek and see what we've got to work with. Little putty. Okay, I'm going to see if I can give him a little bit of supper. See what he does with it. He may be too stressed out to want to eat, and that's fine too. He said, Loop, what was that? Okay. I won't give him much, but, um, there you go. He says, hey, that's not too bad. He's not dehydrated, but I gave him a few drops of water a little while ago. His keel feels really, really good, so he was making a great living in the wild. Yeah. Oh, that's better. All right, little buddy. Alright, well that'll be it for now. Okay. Um, this was a big rescue too because the DNR had to wade out into the lake and, and literally hook this bird out of a tree. So. Um, this uh, was a male, barred owl, adult, and um, usually fishing line collisions aren't this bad. I don't know how he got so stripped, but there's a laceration right here. I don't know if we'll, we'd be able to articulate those edges, but you can see them. Um, I guess that's ligament exposure. The patagium uh, is intact, which is good. 
Um, th when they have barbed wire fence collisions, this is the part that, that really is their death now. If that gets torn, then there's nothing you can do about that. I don't think anything's broken, but well, he sure is sore. Yeah. Will you grab his head and I'll do my... Okay. Here, okay. It's all right, buddy. Here, why don't we... Cor? Yeah, here, I'll just use this. Let me get it. So what we do is we look for any other wounds. So any place that's on feathers that I attach, we'll look for any of them. I gave him um, an injection of that, uh, like that killer antibiotic that's 165 bucks a bottle. Um, and so there's a minor short there. Yeah, and also Scott, it was all wound around his leg, especially the uh, the middle toe. So uh, you know, Scott had me be sure and go over that when I got home because he was worried that something may be embedded, but it wasn't. And I gave him uh, a spot of ivermectin on the neck in case flies had laid eggs in that open wound there. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of carrying over the potassium here, but we'll see what happens. Now, Scott said when he did uh, get him in his truck, he um, he did flare his, you know, he did pull the wing out. So he can use it a little bit, but he's just, you know, when he's yeah. at rest, it's just kind of hanging okay. a little bit. Well, I would say their legs are okay. <clears throat> yeah, and I felt... Um, the, uh, the you know all the toes on both sides just to make sure the the one in the middle um, you know wasn't any cooler than the rest mm -hmm. and he was making a good living mm -hmm. well this is what we could do it's okay buddy and he uh, you got it. well the, it's hard to tell just from today how bad the wounds are it's a lot of bruising yeah I think we should try to give him a chance I think that maybe and let that heal by itself. Yeah. Um, I figured then, that um, that would granulate in. Yeah. Um, it's probably safer for this guy not to have any bandage. I think so too. Because that we want that potassium to be moving. Yeah. Um, we could try the MSO, uh, but I would probably say the first. I'll probably maybe not do anything now. Okay. Where where would I? I've got the MSO. Where maybe, would I put it? Well, this part. If this part is really um, hardy. Yeah, it's. You may lose it. You mean you mean like have to amputate it? Yeah, there's no blood supply. Good blood supply going in. Oh. So when they get a lot of scabs and a lot of scarring, yeah. you, just, you see soft, soft, hardy, yeah. hardy. Yeah. So. Um, and all that was just really red yesterday, but and and I've irrigated with Novasan. Was that? No, maybe just cover it that way. Yeah. I think I don't think it's horrible. We just need to give some time. Okay. Um, so DMSO would improve blood supply to the area. The only thing is without band, it's just gonna get everywhere. But that's okay. Um, you want to put a little DMSO twice a day over that area. Okay. And then I don't. This is. Yeah, that's that's yeah. probably secondary to that. I mean, this is mole over this the yeah. leg, but it's not big, big yeah. one. It's not open. I think no, you just. No, it's just um, probably the feathers damage a little bit. Yeah. So you got wanna, your knees skint, buddy. Do you want to do that? I think yeah. that would be a, a reasonable approach. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right, buddy. Oh, come here. I want you to see this. Here, you want to shoot down in here. This is the yeah. position that, that. that looks really, really bad. That means it's probably up near the shoulder, uh, you know, through and through break. You want to still palpate him? Yeah. yeah. So. He's a beautiful specimen. That way, at least we know for sure how bad it is. I mean, obviously, it looks bad already. Ooh, goodness. Yeah. Ooh. That's okay. Oh, it's right at the joint, I think. Okay. Okay. Well, let's cover his head so he'll break out. This is a. Um, uh, I believe it's a male Cooper's mm -hmm. hog. It's either, it's hard to tell the difference between um, Cooper's hogs and sharp shin hogs. The, the cap is darker on one and also on one the tail is more blunt as opposed to being more rounded. 
So, um, you know, this is either a male Cooper's hawk or a female. Um, it might be a female sharp shin because of the ridge on the on the foreleg. That's why they call them sharp shin. Uh, and this was a hit by a car at about nine o'clock this morning. Oh goodness. And it was this this being a first year bird, this is one of the twenty percent that actually lived through the winter, which is a real shame. So Well, I mean there's a fracture. I don't know if it's more stab or not. Um, it's close by the elbow. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of, the way it was flipped around like that. And these are sort of the hot rods of the raptor family, and so they don't make very good rehabilitation candidates because by the time their wound heals, they have destroyed all of their plumage, and you're just sort of not left with a lot to work with. So usually, unless it's a minor kind of thing that I can flip them pretty quickly within a few days, I'll just, you know, I'll just euthanize them. Yeah, because we're talking about six weeks. Yeah, and it felt like it was near the joint to me. Is that? It's about. So that would be hard to pin anyway. Yeah, it's very little room. I mean, they, they open more to complications. Yeah, the, the the thing when you've got the break near the joint is that the scar t the bone scar tissue is a lot bigger than the original fracture site. If it's near the joint, then it. Uh, uh, In purse. Uh, the mobility of the joint. Yeah, it. Um, and the ability to fly. Right. Right. Well. Okay. So we're, we're probably going to let her go. Okay. And Tina, I'm sorry about this. Well, I'm sorry, honey. I'm sorry.